Good evening. Today is Monday, December 12th, 2022. The time is 7.30 p.m. I'd like to convene this regularly scheduled Board of Educa Watertown Board of Education meeting. I ask that we all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Davidson? Ms. Phelan? Here. Mr. Gavalas? Here. Ms. Carrasco? Here. Ms. Hoskin? Here. Ms. Palumbo? Here. Ms. Rukowski? Here. Mr. Mellis? Here. Ms. Lawton? Here. Ms. Hillian? Here. Thank you very much. Good evening, board members. Thank you uh, for um, switching up a little bit, moving our meeting to 7.30. I hope the uh, Swift concert was nothing short of spectacular. <laughs> Um, you should have received in your, uh, your packets uh, on Saturday. Did everybody receive them? Yes. 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 Awesome. Ms. Hosking, um, do we have a motion to accept minutes? And, uh, sorry, real quick, we're gonna, we'll, we'll do them separately since there's th three different meetings. Yes, Mr. Chair. I move that the board approve the minutes of the regular <coughs> Board of Education meeting dated November 28, 2022. Thank you, Ms. Hosking. Do I have a second? Yes, I second that. Thank you, Ms. Phelan. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Abstentions? Motion carries. Uh, Ms. Hosking, do we have a motion for the special board meeting? Yes. I move that the board approve the minutes of the special board of education meeting dated November 28, 2022. Thank you. Do I have a second? I second the motion. Thank you, Mr. Malagudi. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Abstentions? Motion carries. And third time's a charm. Ms. Hosking, do we have a motion for the uh, special board meeting on December 1st? Yes, Mr. Chair. I move that the board approve the minutes of the special board of education meeting dated December 1st, 2022. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you very much. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Was anybody not? Was everybody there on the first? Okay. Thank you. Motion carries. Sorry, it's all flooded. Um, okay. Um, moving on to superintendent superintendent's recommendations and report. Wonderful. Hi, everybody. Um, a quick report for me, um, but thank you for everybody who attended the concert this evening. Um, I didn't get a chance to go myself, but um, it is officially concert performance time. So it's great to hear uh, chorus <coughs> and instrumental uh, in, in terms of co uh, orchestra. So thank you for coming out, and I hope everybody enjoys the very festive mood that the performances bring. Um, also, this past weekend, we had a number of shows of Alice in Wonderland. What a fabulous, fabulous job the theater uh, group has done here at Watertown High School. Thank you to those who attended. Um, and again, we're always looking for opportunities to try and grow our program. So um, as budget season comes up, too, hopefully that will start to percolate in people's minds of just how important it is to support these students who find uh, theater as, as their um, kind of focus area. Um, and today was also our first official weather-related delay, so thank you to everybody for moving quickly and swiftly, um, and also to first student, our town crews, as well as our in-district custodial maintenance crews uh, for just being quick on their feet. Uh, it's always a, you know, a, it, it is strategically called, um, but it's always a little tricky in the morning when it's dark outside and you're trying to get a gauge of how warm the ground is to see how fast ice will melt, so um, thank you for everything. And Officially, December 1st has come and gone, and the HVAC application is in. That's it for me. Thank you. Through the chair. Sorry, uh, you were asking if everybody was at that meeting. Ms. Palumbo was not, so do we need to Yeah, there's a special meeting. Oh, so, special meeting. Um, um, Ms. Davidson, can you um, the note December the record that um, Ms. Palumbo should be in abstention from the December 1st, First 2022 special board meeting? Thank you. I knew there was one. I just couldn't yeah. remember what it was. Thank you. Yep. <coughs> um, so real quick, um, before I um, see if any board members have any comments, I'd like to thank Ms. Davidson for um, all of her work with Alice in Wonderland. Um, we know it's, it is tireless, it's exhausting on physically and emotionally. Um, and so thank you for continuing to give back even though um, uh, his kids have, have moved on to college. So yes, totally a team effort. 
Through the chair. Do any board members have any comments? Yes, through the chair. Um, it was wonderful that all the students got to go see the play. Mm -hmm. um, my son loved it. He thought it was great. So, which sparked an Alice in Wonderland whole thing. So, <laughs> I just want to say thank you. It was well, the, the spring nice. musical is coming up. Tryouts are the 21st. Auditions are the 21st. So, they'll enjoy that as well. All right. Okay. Nice. Great. Any, uh, any other board members have any um, questions or comments for Dr. V? Awesome. Moving on. Uh, Mr. Russ is not here this evening. So we do have some updates in our packet. Okay. I think. Yep. Um, do we want to, so um, board members, if, uh, if you've had a chance to review the updates, are there any questions or comments in regards to the updates? If not, um, um, maybe we can save them. Uh, if you find anything, you can add it, uh, bring to the next meeting. Um, all right. Public participation. In accordance with policy 9050, public participants must state their name and address for the record and limit statements to three minutes. The board encourages speakers not to express defamatory comments about Watertown Board of Education personnel or any other persons associated with the Watertown public school system. Are there any members of the public that wish to address the board? Please come up to the podium, state your name and address. Stephen Philpine, 349 Artillery Road. Water time. Um, I just after this week with the lockdown, I had some concerns. Um, I know there's limited budget money, but every time I've been dropping my kids off for eight years at the loop here and stuff like that, I never see a staff member there. And there's four different entrances that they can come in. There should be at least either security or staff member there. I did. School security in Waterbury. We any time we had an open door, we had a staff member there. We were able to direct anybody that wasn't supposed to be coming in to the office. Um, during that lockdown, was another thing that I was brought to my attention from my child. The cafeteria. Is there a plan to get those kids somewhere? Because you're having it as an overflow um, study hall there, mm -hmm. and it's a big fishbowl. If somebody was in the school, those kids got to be protected somehow. That glass isn't going to protect them. So that's Great. Okay. Thank you. you. Typically, we don't respond um, to right. public comment. However, I will say this. Um, first and foremost, thank you for bringing that to our attention. Um, we need parents, their eyes and ears to, to see so that we're aware. Um, many times, there is a staff member there, or, or there should be someone there. They could be just inside the door, outside of visibility. Um, but something I'm sure Dr. B will follow up on. Um, as far as the protocols for uh, uh, the cafeteria, um, our building security plans um, are, I'll call it private. Um, they're not disclosed to the public. However, um, I will ask Dr. V just to look into yeah, that one specifically, make sure it's have to addressed. Go to it as a safe area. Yep, it nope. should be. Absolutely. Because I know my daughter has th three study halls. And mm -hmm. Absolutely. She's in there. Going to know where she's supposed to go. Absolutely. So, Dr. V will take that as a follow up to to um, make sure that plan is uh, the cafeteria is accounted for in the high school plan specifically, and work with building administration um, to to ensure um, both of those items are are buttoned up. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you back. Appreciate Bring it. Back the Indians. Thanks. Any other members of the public wish to address the board? All right. Seeing none. Um, all right, agenda I H. I'm gonna say I told you I'm not gonna do well. 2023 uh, 24 athletic budget presentation. Mr. Paul Cattuccio, athletic director. Thank you. Good evening. Is on correct? Yes. yes. Um, thank you for the opportunity to come speak tonight. I apologize for not being at the last board meeting to present the budget. Um, but again, thank you for the opportunity tonight to highlight some of the priorities that we have this year for athletics. <clears throat> so basically what I did was I just broke down um, the priorities for uh, Wartown High School and Swift <coughs> Middle School. You'll see here budget priority number one deals with um, <coughs> uniforms. We are in a five-year uniform rotation cycle. Um, 
this year. However, we were unable to purchase those uniforms, so it pushes off what we would purchase this year for next year. So it looks like next year we have a number of sets to purchase, uh, including boys basketball, girls basketball, cross country, volleyball, ice hockey, and boys lacrosse, um, and cheerleading, actually. Um, so there's a few items that we have to um, we have to purchase. As you know, um, many kids uh, will wear these uniforms over the course of five years, and and uh, high school uh, students play hard, and so it's 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 important to make sure that they're in um, some new and updated uniforms regularly. Priority number two includes some new equipment. Um, and here we have some items that are necessary. Uh, we have a scoreboard for the softball field in the back of the high school, which um, has not been in operation for my time here for seven years. Um, the baseball team down at the land, they're going through a process of, of donations for a, um, for a scoreboard down at the land field in, in conjunction with Parks and Recreation. And so we feel that it makes sense to make sure the softball team has something at the back of the field that um, they can be proud of. Uh, some other items um, include a new scores table for the gym. Uh, I'm not sure if many of you are familiar with the scores table in the gym, um, but it is tired and, and needs updating, uh, to say the least. Um, one other item that's not on there um, is a shot clock. As many of you know, the CIC has put into place uh, shot clock rules for boys and girls basketball for next year. It's a requirement uh, that we are going to need to purchase and make sure our gym is um, ready for that for next basketball season. <clears throat> I don't. That is not. Skip it. It's not actually in our package either. Hmm. That's interesting. Um, one other item that I included uh, was safety and security. <clears throat> in this day and age, safety and security is, is very, very important. Um, if you've been to our football games, if you've been to our basketball games or hockey games, we regularly will have police in attendance. Uh, I would like to extend that also to boys and girls soccer. Um, one police officer for each of those games, but then also um, boys and girls lacrosse in the spring. Uh, it's, there are certain sports that, that um, attract more of a crowd than you might typically see, and so having a uh, police officer there in attendance makes a whole lot of sense. Something that I do want to share with you, uh, th this, this is not my slide. What this do you have in your packet? Up. The current Would you year. like us to Let's current year follow today. this presentation then? We can follow our paper presentation. That would be great. Okay. Oh, okay. So. The year behind. That's the year behind. That's why. Two years behind. Uniforms correctly, all of that. Okay. So something that I do want to bring to your attention is the budget difference between this current year and next year. Last year's budget, this, pet, this current year's budget is $349,000. Uh, next year's budget increases significantly to $436,000. Just so you're aware, um, I broke down contracted costs. The, the athletic budget is, is largely um, built with contracted services, whether it's athletic trainer, whether it's police and fire, whether it's tra transportation and officials. So of that $436,000, $327,000 is contracted services. Just to, just to make you aware, that's roughly 75% of that budget is, is contracted services, just so you're aware. Okay. Say that number one more time for us. Paul. Sure. Three hundred and twenty. It's rounding rounding up to three hundred twenty-eight thousand dollars and seventy-five percent. So for the middle school, similarly speaking, um, we have some priorities, including. And I'm not going to use the slideshow because I'm not exactly sure what's on it. To be perfectly honest with you. Um, we have some uniforms that are necessary. We have cross-country uniforms that we have to uh, replace. Uh, and we have some softball pants and baseball pants that have to be updated. Uh, and so there's a, there's a need for, for an increase there. Um, 
And then also transportation, there, there's increases regularly when it comes to costs. Uh, and so the transportation costs are increasing, which uh, is outlined here in the, with the numbers that we have here. And again, the SWIFT athletic budget, <clears throat> there's an increase of about $5,000 um, to $54,000. $361. Again, of that budget, $43,000, they're, they're fixed contracted costs. So that's roughly 79% of that budget, if my math was correct. And so I just, I, you know, it's one of those things where, um, you know, it's really great to see the athletes, the student athletes out on the field participating at high levels. Um, great to see the teams participate. I um, want to continue to make sure that we provide what we need for them to participate um, and, and give them that stage, right? We have the stage inside, right? We have the classroom where kids can excel. We have the, the, the musical and, and all the performances that we have there. But athletics also is also a stage for the kids to compete. And just want to make sure that we are able to um, accommodate them. Thank you, Mr. Petrucci. Do Thank any you. board members have any questions or comments? Hey, do, through the chair? Yes, Ms. Lawton. So since that wrong slide is up, the proposed 21-22 budget was 349-248, which ended up being your actual this year budget. So one would infer that there's not been a lot of increases that you expected. So what have we been going without? Because that's from two years ago, and it looks like that's the number that we're still at. So are this, there things that we're going without? Well, this year we have a lot of new items that are built into the budget. Um, those new items being additional security, um, those items being, um, again, the, the, the scores table, the scoreboard, the, the items that we have to purchase. Um, so it, it's been... We've been very... Uh, we've done a lot with the money that we've had. Um, but it's time to start to kind of progress with athletics. It's all like you've been maintaining. Any, any other board member questions or comments? Mr. Cattuccio, can you go back to, um, you had mentioned that we did not replace uniforms last year. So does that mean we're kind of out of cycle so we have to do it this year? We didn't, we're not. <laughs> replacing uniforms this year, <coughs> which means we have to purchase not only the sets that we we're planning on purchasing this year, but we have to purchase these plus next year. So were uniform replacements not included in the budget for this year? Um, they were, but we were in spending freeze and therefore did not have the fund. We're not able to purchase those. Okay. We were able to purchase necessary items for athletics this year. Okay. So... Um, so we're basically looking at having to pay for two years of uniforms because of this year's budget freeze, right? right correct. Okay. Makes total sense. Um, and, and so I ask those questions because um, for, for those watching, I want there to be clarity mm -hmm. on the fiscal state of our school district, right? That we're not able to replace things that have been used for five years by athletes who sweat and get get them dirty and worn. And let's be honest, we have kids, they get gross and they have to be replaced. So that's, wh that's where we are. Um, I have one other question. So um, just to confirm, so is it, our packet correct? That the current budget was three forty nine two forty eight, and you're requesting four thirty yes. six. Yes. Okay. And can you help me understand it? Swift. Obviously, we need uniforms four thousand dollars. Transportation three thousand dollars. So an additional seven. But the total budget increase is only fifty two hundred. Where were you able to save eighteen hundred dollars? I'd have to look back specifically at okay. all of the lines. I'm, I'm just curious because anybody that can 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 save money, it, it, it's awesome. So I'm just curious I'd have to go back and look at it specifically. Okay. Um, but there are times where where 
when you plan and you allocate dollars for officials. Um, might be able to flex certain numbers of games. Traditionally, we look for a certain number of games at the middle school level. We're, we're scaling back a little bit as far as the, the numbers of in reality. So a 20 game season for basketball, I don't think we have you, we haven't played a 20 game season basketball for the, seven years ago, maybe we played play a 20 game season. I'd have to look back specifically okay. to get you those numbers. No, nothing urgent. Um, but to your, your reference to security, um, I agree wholeheartedly. Um, that we should have a first responder on site. I don't know, um, you know, f obviously for, for football, for example, we have an ambulance there. Mm -hmm. Do we have the same type of coverage at our other sporting events? So when it comes to ambulance coverage, um, no. Um, we have added a additional EMT um, for hockey. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you remember, but a few years back there was a terrible issue that unfolded down in Fairfield County. Yep. Um, and when that unfolded, you know, we have police officers at the game um, and we have a trainer at the game. However, if something like that goes down on the ice, um, having an extra set of hands with somebody who has a radio with poor cell service there, yep. um, readily available, it makes a whole lot of sense. And, and, and you're alluding to my exact point is whether we don't have an EMT or paramedic on, on, on site having a police officer, mm -hmm. a first responder, who can, one, initiate communication uh, directly to, to uh, Watertown PD dispatch, um, two, um, is trained with certain um, uh, uh, training to respond. Mm -hmm. um, it improves uh, whether it's our athletes or spectators. I think, it, it's, I think it's an important thing. And that have. direct access, that direct access is huge. And it happened this past year in soccer too, having that police officer there radioed in an issue that we had to get an ambulance up to the high school four, um, saved a lot of time and made sure that we had pieces in place, but that um, was a big difference. Thank you, I, and I, I agree that's that's important to our mission of protecting our kids. Um, all right, thank you, Mr. Cattuccio. All right, no problem, and I apologize that the slides were a little off. I apologize I about that. I will take the blame on that one, because uh, I tried to 